that leaves us with a question. How do we determine the relative effectiveness of public versus charter schools when charters enroll students from high income families? So how do you tell where the good teaching is happening? Well, I have two answers to that. First, compare them to public schools that have the same lottery enrollment process. In Chicago, they're called magnet schools. Exact same process. Parents fill out an app, it's a lottery, they get in. So com don't compare the charters to the neighborhood. Compare them to other public schools that have that same event. And in Chicago, when you look at student achievement data, you mean to tell me that you have all that advantage, and not only do you not measure up to the magnets, you don't even measure up to the neighborhoods. And what they like to say is, well, charters, they, they, they have similar achievement for neighborhood schools, but they do it at much less cost. Right? But when you compare them to what you're supposed to compare them to, you see the achievement is lacking. Right? So that's one way you do it. Second way you do it, instead of comparing attainment scores, compare how much students grow academically over the course of a year. In Chicago, we have a mechanism for that. It's called the MAP assessment. It's a national standardized test. And it measures students in one year, they take the test and they get a RIT score. The next year, they take it again and get another RIT score and their growth is the difference between the two scores. So it measures student learning over an entire academic year. That's pretty significant. And it gives students a score, a percentile, and it only compares them to students who scored what they scored. Because growth, if I score like a 200, and another kid scores a 250, the next year the kid at 200 gains 10 points, and this kid gains 5 points, you can't really compare them because they're different levels. It only compares you to students who scored what you scored. Am I making sense? Yes. All right. What did this assessment say in Chicago? So what I did, I took the data district-wide, because the district didn't do this analysis, of course. I took the data, did my analysis, gave it to the Sun Times, or Chicago Sun Times. They verified my analysis. Numbers were slightly different, but the same conclusion. Did they publish it? Yes, they did. <laughs> so this is the attainment. Remember? The, the map also does attainment. It does attainment and growth. So this was attainment. And again, it looks like charters and neighborhood schools do about the same. But what happens when we look at the growth percentiles? There you go. Neighborhood schools at the 75th percentile, while charter schools are less than the 50th. And so they're recruiting students who can get attainment comparable to the public schools, but what do they do with those students? Nothing. Now, let's look at it neighborhood by neighborhood, right? Here's a neighborhood in Chicago, the North River Commission Service Area, which encompasses Albany Park and Rogers Park. These are attainment scores. And so the two highlighted ones are charters, right? You have CICS charter, they got the 93rd percentile. Wow, they're really doing great. Their students are really scoring high. And then you got, what is this, a Spira? They're at the 40th. And so they're distributed throughout. So it looks like the narrative that the charter folks like to put out there is true. They, some charters are doing well. So they do about what neighborhood schools do. You got neighborhood schools down here, you got charter schools up here. But what happens when we look at growth? What do those students learn in the course of an academic year? Dead last. Dead last. Both schools. Let's take a look at another neighborhood in Chicago. That's the north side. Let's go over to the south side in West Pullman, Argyle Gardens. Once again, you have the three charters throughout the distribution. Some on the low end, 
Middle and high end. Well, almost high end. Right? But what happens when we look at how those students grow academically? All three dead last. And it's important for us to remember in this system of choice, right? There's supposed to be that parent trigger. The parent's not happy. They'll take the child out and put them in a better school. We got to remember that parents chose to put their children in these schools. That they took their children out of these schools because their attainment scores might have been low. Not realizing the difference between attainment and growth. Here's uh, another South Sax neighborhood chapel. We have one charter, it's Shabbat. And again, all of the attainment in this area is pretty low. Right? This is a depressed, low income area. What happens when we look at growth? Once again, it lasts. Now, these are a bunch of neighborhood schools. No charters here. They're all neighborhood schools throughout Chicago. And as you can see, their attainment is pretty low. These are the kinds of schools they want to close. And I need you all to hear this, Boston, because you have schools just like this that they want to close based on attainment scores, based on scores that are more a result of a failure that took place long before they ever reached the school. But what are these schools doing with these kids? Now I'm going to show you the growth scores for the exact same school. Oh, sorry. And so these children are learning. 99th percentile, 92nd, 97th, 95th, 94th, 82nd. The schools are getting them, and they have low attainment. They probably showed up like those kids at Johnson on day one, but every year they grow. These schools are doing more with these children than a charter school or a private school ever could. But all they're looking at is this. And then shutting these schools down in order to send them to schools like this. Are we understanding this? Yes. Now I'm going to bridge this. This is another piece. These are the 45 highest growth schools in Chicago. Right here. All 99 percentile. These are the lowest growth schools. You notice there are no charters here. Every single one is public. Over here, over half are charters for turnaround. That charters and turnaround don't make up half our district. A little bit over 15 percent. And you mean to tell you, me you make over you make up only 15 percent of the district? But when it comes to the lowest growth schools in terms of academic performance. You make up over half? Something is wrong here. Government has no, whether parents deserve choices is irrelevant or far less relevant than the fact that government has no business subsidizing a model for schooling that produces poor options for parents to choose from. 